of Cadillac for 1968. A massive, completely new power plant. It's big. Bigger than the 16-cylinder engine Cadillac built in the 30s. Bigger than any other passenger car engine in the world. Look at it. A husky cast iron V8. A 472 cubic inch displacement. With a bore of 4.3 inches. And a stroke of 4.06. 1968 marks the start of a new generation of Cadillac engines designed to supply the kinds of performance demanded today and for all the tomorrows of the immediate future. Now why a big engine? Well, to the mind of an engineer, everything else being equal, cubic inch capacity is the most important single thing about an engine. It's where performance starts. It isn't just a matter of a big engine for a big car, but rather an optimum size engine to provide an ideal balance of performance characteristics. Performance? Well, out of those 472 cubes comes greater torque than from any other passenger car engine in America. 525 foot-pounds of torque at 3,000 RPM and 375 horsepower at a relatively low 4,400 RPM. Now, it's a lot of numbers. Add them all up, and what do they mean to a Cadillac buyer? A quiet engine and Cadillac are synonymous. A quiet engine, not a muffled one surrounded by blankets of insulation. That's the approach of others. At Cadillac, we engineer the noise out, not cover it up. Designing a new engine gave Cadillac engineers an opportunity to come up with a new concept of quiet performance. A size is the key factor here, too. Sturdy, massive construction. The walls of the engine block are considerably thicker, stronger, and heavier. The heavier crankshaft, sonic tested for perfection, is more rigid. Main bearings and crank pins are bigger in diameter and have 24% more bearing surface. The connecting rod has a stronger column section. Now, all of this absorbs sound and cuts down on vibration. Now, the accessory mounting brackets are more rigid. Now, this tunes their normal operating frequencies out above those of the engine, reducing noise considerably. In addition, the belt drives have been made shorter for even less noise. The rubber-coated pulleys and specially treated belts add to this new level of quietness. And we've already mentioned that the pistons and combustion chambers are designed for smooth, quiet operation. Well, that these benefits are built into the engine is a fact. Understanding how some of these things are done might serve as interesting background. Starting with a clean slate, Cadillac engineers were able to do many things which they never before had an opportunity to do. Things which spell greater efficiency and reliability. Since the air injector reactor system for emission control must be standard on all cars this year, it was considered in the basic design of the engine. The air passages are built right into the cylinder heads, eliminating all the external plumbing from around here. The system is simple, in many ways more reliable and more efficient. The new engine has four exhaust ports, rather than the previous three, 
and four intake ports, improving engine breathing. This also eliminates the need for putting two exhaust valves close together, which reduces concentrating too much heat in one spot. And the cooling system has shorter, more direct passages for more efficient cooling. The complete lack of aluminum in the cooling system minimizes the danger of galvanic corrosion and erosion of metal. Now this permits a wider selection of coolants and rust inhibitors. A new bypass thermostat improves the operation of the heater. And this little bimetal temperature sensing device sounds a buzzer, activates a red warning light, and raises the temperature gauge to its uppermost limit to provide an early warning if the engine should overheat. A little feature, but important, and only made possible by fresh design approach. It reacts to the temperature of the metal in the cylinder head. So even if water hoses should be disconnected or the radiator cap replaced loosely by a service station attendant, this device still works. And a highly improved carburetor meters fuel more precisely than ever before. It also features a quick set choke, new throttle mechanism, downshift switch, and corrosion resisting Teflon coated shafts. Quick starts and improved performance. In addition, the engine has a large two and a half inch single exhaust system with the low back pressure characteristics of a dual exhaust system. Efficient and quiet. A new muffler is two inches longer and a new conventional resonator is relocated to the rear of the muffler and behind the axle. A new 15 plate battery and heavier cables complement the new engine. More starting juice and longer life. A number of refinements contribute to improved oil economy. Now here are just a couple of them. Along with the already proved advances in bore finish, the cylinders and rings have been designed for a more precise fit. In addition, a new front crankshaft seal acts like a pump to return the oil to the crankcase. Now what do all these features mean? While the new engine is the heart of the 1968 Cadillac, it is still only one of several power teammates. The engine develops the power, the transmission modifies it to suit driving conditions, the drive shaft sends the power to the axle, the differential transmits the power to the wheels. All of these powertrain components have been beefed up, tailored to match the new, more powerful engine. Well, naturally, Cadillac engineers have also incorporated the latest engineering advances in developing the new powertrain. Let's start with the transmission. Your 1968 turbo hydromatic transmission has undergone considerable change to increase its torque capacity. It features a fixed stator, a higher capacity direct clutch, larger bearings supporting the pinion gears and other revisions. The case is heavier. The rear bearing and seal are larger and the new transmission fluid has a longer life. A higher capacity, heavier slip yoke here plus a higher capacity CV joint at each end of the prop shaft sends the power along smoothly and quietly. The rear axle has been designed to handle the high torque put out by the engine and to make the most efficient use of it. The ring gear is thicker and stronger. A lower numerical ratio of 2.94 to 1 is provided. A ratio of 3.21 to 1 on the 75 series. The 3.36 to 1 ratio is discontinued. The differential gears are new and have a higher capacity, as do the output shafts in the rear axle. Power teammates from engine to the rear wheels. The Eldorado has an all new final drive. It's simpler and more rugged for 1968. First, it's of the bevel gear design similar to that of our rear drive differentials, rather than the more complicated planetary gear setup of last year. Second, the ratio is now 3.07 to 1, down from the previous 3.21 to 1. Third, the output shafts are bigger in diameter and other internal parts are stronger. Now, what do these three things add up to?
Perhaps to you and to the people who buy Cadillac, its beauty lies in distinctive sculptured lines, deft touches of gleaming bright work, lustrous deep acrylic lacquers, fine fabrics, luxurious leathers and appointments. But to frame, chassis, and suspension engineers, the beauty of Cadillac starts beneath the skin. The bare bones of your 1968 Cadillac, a thing of beauty to the eye of an engineer. Rugged, solid, an example of superb engineering and craftsmanship. Engineering refinements in the 1968 Cadillac frame include retuning the front end. To do this, a new radiator support bracket also serves as a structural frame member. The front bulkheads have been moved to provide greater stability when the car is in motion. The body mounts have been refined on the standard car to better isolate the body from frame. And in all cars, the power steering pump mounting is more rigid. A smoother ride and better ride balance have been achieved by lowering the spring rates approximately 10%. Now this has been done front and rear to the Eldorado and at the rear of all other cars. Complementing this, of course, are our exclusive Pliocell shock absorbers featuring gas-filled nylon envelopes. These seal out air, dirt, and moisture for longer life. And the Freon keeps the shocks working effectively regardless of temperature. By increasing the rear understeer geometry 3% on the standard car, Cadillac engineers have made a noticeable improvement in car directional stability and cornering transitions. Up front, the steering linkage has been improved too. Well now, let's take a moment to have a look at a Cadillac exclusive. For 1968, we have a new wheel, which has two tire bead retainers, here and here. These are designed to keep the tire on the rim if the tire should go flat. Other wheels have just one outer bead. The tire could still jump the rim on the inside, possibly damaging the tire and rim. So Cadillac has added this inner bead, one of those little Cadillac extras. Well now then, it takes power to make the wheels go. And it takes power to bring them to a stop. And this year, the buyer can order standard drum brakes or optional disc front brakes on all cars, not just on the Eldorado as last year. Now, both systems are excellent and have been further refined. But why do we offer this choice? Well, <laughs> because some people prefer drum brakes and some prefer disc brakes. People who do a lot of in-city driving may appreciate the fact that drum brakes require less pedal pressure. But the individual who drives the freeways and turnpikes where repeated high-speed stops are required will appreciate disc brakes. They have little tendency to develop brake fade. They stop smooth and straight. And they give the driver a, a feel of precise control under severe braking conditions. For many drivers, disc brakes are the best choice. So. We offer disc brakes on the front wheels as an extra charge option. To sum up,